¿Qué tal si deliramos por un ratito? ¿Qué tal si clavamos los ojos más allá de la infancia? En las calles, los automóviles serán aplastados por los perros. La gente no será manejada por el automóvil, ni será programada por el ordenador, ni será comprada por el supermercado, ni será tampoco mirada por el televisor. El televisor dejará de ser el miembro más importante de la familia y será tratado como la plancha o el lavarropas. Se incorporará a los códigos penales el delito de estupidez que cometen quienes viven por tener o por ganar en vez de vivir por vivir no más. Como canta el pájaro sin saber que canta, juega el niño sin saber que en ningún país irán presos los muchachos que se nieguen a cumplir el servicio militar, sino los que quieran cumplirlo. Nadie vivirá para trabajar, pero todos trabajaremos para vivir. Los historiadores no creerán que a los países les encanta ser invadidos. Los políticos no creerán que a los pobres les encanta comer promesas. La solemnidad se dejará de creer que es una virtud. Y nadie, nadie tomará en serio a nadie que no sea capaz de tomarse el pelo. La muerte y el dinero perderán sus mágicos poderes. Y ni por defunción ni por fortuna se convertirá el canalla en virtuoso caballero. La comida no será una mercancía, ni la comunicación un negocio, porque la comida y la comunicación son derechos humanos. Nadie morirá de hambre, porque nadie morirá de indigestión. Los niños de la calle no serán tratados como si fueran basura, porque no habrá niños de la calle. Los niños ricos no serán tratados como si fueran dinero, porque no habrá niños ricos. La educación no será el privilegio de quienes puedan pagarla y la policía no será la maldición de quienes no puedan comprarla. La justicia y la libertad, hermanas siamesas, condenadas a vivir separadas, volverán a juntarse, bien pegaditas, espalda contra espalda. La Iglesia también dictará otro mandamiento que se le había olvidado a Dios. Amarás a la naturaleza de la que formas parte. Serán reforestados los desiertos del mundo y los desiertos del alma. Los desesperados serán esperados y los perdidos serán encontrados porque ellos se desesperaron de tanto esperar y ellos se perdieron por tanto buscar. Seremos compatriotas y contemporáneos de todos los que tengan voluntad de belleza y voluntad de justicia. Hayan nacido cuando hayan nacido y hayan vivido donde hayan vivido, sin que importe ni un poquito las fronteras del mapa ni del tiempo. Seremos imperfectos, porque la perfección seguirá siendo el aburrido privilegio de los dioses. Pero en este mundo, en este mundo chambón y jodido, seremos capaces de vivir cada día como si fuera el primero y cada noche como si fuera la última.
I don't know how to grieve you, my beloved. Before my tears well up, they leave. No one is my beloved. I'm caught in the confusion of missing an illusion. I'm longing for someone who never was. You were the surprise that never came, defeated before even entering the game. There is no one to blame, although I sure would love to. It's all in Mother Nature's name. Fuck off, Mother Nature, you tricked me. Nothing has changed, but nothing is the same. It is the emptiest feeling to lose nothing. I miss someone who never was someone. I'm missing no one. I'm missing my child. Missing a heartbeat or two. I'm missing you. Who? It's hard to explain the pain of losing something you never had. Something that was never more than an expectation, a dream, or at most a cluster of cells. It's not like I'm dying or on the verge of a humanitarian disaster. People don't need to start having sex to save the human race because I can't have children. I know it's a hole in my life that society finds difficult to understand. I call it the pain of never. These are its symptoms. Now is the beginning of our new tomorrow. You'll know. Now is the time to deal with our sorrow. The pains and hurts of yesteryear need to be acknowledged and seen without fear. Yes, we've done many things which we prefer to forget, but even more damning those things we didn't, which lead to regret, over the life that we thought was ours to claim, and instead we live under persistent shame. Yet I tell you this, sisters like me, we need to speak out so that others can see. We're not broken women to be hidden away. We've got so much to offer, so much to say. We're defining a new way for women to be. We're at the cutting edge, creating a new history. So to my sisters I say, let's stop playing small. Let's tune deep inside and hear the call of the world crying out for the wisdom we hold. We need to be fierce and wise, gentle and bold.
need you to keep a secret? Uh, you know of all people you cannot demand that of me. Dad and I are getting a divorce. Our marriage isn't working out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay? That's all you're gonna say? Yeah, okay? Yeah, I, no, I mean, what are you talking about? Well, I convinced him it was his idea, so he's moving out. We're staying here. He wants us to tell you together, so act surprised. Hey, Dad. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Zeke was just telling me that you think I try to stifle you. I said nothing of the sort. Don't you gang up on me. I gotta tell you a secret. Can't tell Mom. Okay. You're getting a divorce. It was Mom's idea. She's moving out, and you and I are gonna stay here. Uh-huh. She doesn't want to make a big deal of it, so of course she's making a big deal of it. Uh-huh. So, when we tell you, act surprised. Yeah, sure. Rantalian, a person who falsely accuses you of stifling them. Rantalian, an invasive Mediterranean weed that strangles surrounding native plants in order to survive. Rantalian, a man whose scrotum hangs lower than his penis. What are we supposed to do now? You're supposed to pick the one you think is the correct definition. Oh, okay. I'll pick mine. No, Mom, you can't say which one yours is because then by deduction, Dad is going to know what the right answer is. Then I pick number one. Mom. What are you doing? I'm burying Dad's Apple Watch. Well, why are you doing that? Because it means more to him than I do. Mom, you're kicking him out, and you know he's going to starve to death out there on his own. And now you're taking away his Apple Watch, and he's going to have no frigging clue where he is. You are a vicious woman. You watch your mouth, and don't tell anyone about this. Another secret. This family is nothing but secrets. It's not a secret. It's just something I don't want you to tell anyone. I've been doing the math, and getting a divorce just doesn't make any sense financially. Is this your way of saying you want to get back together with mom? Absolutely not. I'm 100% committed to uncoupling with your mom. I just don't want to pay any more than we're already paying emotionally. I'm just not clear on the timeline. It doesn't seem like people are being completely honest. Why? Do you know something? No, I don't know anything. Have you seen my Apple Watch? I can't seem to find it anywhere. You taught me how to make this salad. You make the best salads. It's my favorite thing to eat. Your dad didn't like how I was making it, so he asked me to take out the chickpeas. So I took out the chickpeas. He asked me to take out the pine nuts, so I took out the pine nuts. Then the green peppers. Then the black olives. Then the feta. My salad became his obsession. So last week I was making my salad. He turned around for like two seconds to put the spinner in the sink. I turned back. Your father was tossing my salad. He had made his own dressing. That was the last straw. Sorry I'm late. I figured out my gift to you while I overstay my welcome. Oh, no, no, you're not, you're not, not, o no, you're not overstaying. You're not overstaying. You're not overstaying no. welcome at all. My gift is, I'm going to start making movies about us. I realize that we don't have any home movies from when I was a kid. Oh, that's Dad's fault. He didn't know how to choose a good camera. All right, no need to point fingers, but I do need something to play at your funeral. So. What did you have to tell me? Mom and I are getting a divorce. 
Are you surprised? What are you doing with that damn camera? Mom, I told you I was going to start making movies about us. I'm trying to pack and get out of here before Dad comes home from Home Depot. Mom, will you chill? What's the big deal? I don't have time for this right now. Why are you obsessed with taking these movies? Well, what do you think it's like to be me? What do you think it's like to have no footage from your childhood because Nonsense. your parents didn't care to take any? And then when it comes time to build a memory sequence in your autobiographical film, you have to beg your friends on Facebook for footage from their childhoods and pretend that their memories are yours. Who are you? Buddy. Buddy, sweet buddy. Bye, buddy. Bye. Oh. What a day. Zeke, I went to Home Depot. I'm going to miss you. Love, Dad. You just push this button on the side and the app will come up and the watch will buzz when it's time to turn. Where are you turning? I'm turning wherever Google Maps tells me to turn. What are you guys doing here? What do you mean? I thought you were getting a divorce. We got back together last night. We couldn't remember why we were getting a divorce in the first place. We're renting an RV and going on a road trip. Want to come? O kilit be ver diye. Oh! Kilit be ver diye. Bosta sigorto rikhrin tu.
خیلی خوب الو پس چه نمیگی بالا کدوم بالا بالا الان در برات زدم بر من من که تو مغازه مغازه پس این کی بود در برات الان باز کردم من چه میدونم تو در باز کردی از من میپرسی مسخره بازی در الان خود بودی پشت در که من اصلا بنده بهت زنگ میزنم کمال باز تحصیل رو شریخین تو الو کجا رفتی؟ در چرا باز گذاشتی؟ مگه تو کجایی؟ ما خونه خونه؟ اه. مگه نگفتی مغازم؟ پرستو مرسی 
اینجا زندگی درست کردی برام باز کن دیگه
They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. I've certainly found that to be true. I'm amazed at what people throw away. They're all made from bits that other people don't want. So every bit of them is interesting. I haven't been able to create as much lately. They're not throwing it away as much as they used to. Either people have started valuing things more or something is a bit off. I suspect it's the latter. Humans don't appreciate what they've got until it's faded or disappeared entirely. Mate, these are sick. What? Did you make them? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I make them. Boy, you made all of them. Sick. Yeah. You don't mind if I take some photos, do you? No, nah, it's okay. Dude, they're just epic. What do you make them out of? It sort of changes all the time, really. It's, it's, it's whatever washes in. Sometimes it's plastic or sometimes even metal. This. Uh, it's, it's made primarily of driftwood. It just kind of just shows up on the ocean and then uh, just kind of tack it together. That's amazing. Can you show us how to make one? Yeah, yeah, OK. Um, I'm working on one at the minute, actually. You can come and have a look if you want. Amazing, <laughs> thank you. Oh, real talent here, mate. What did you make that one out of? That's, that's CDs. CDs? God, you really did make it out of everything, didn't you? So cool, dude. Thanks for showing us that. That's OK. It's quite easy, actually. What? Wow. Can we buy one? No, they're not for sale. Well, what'd you do with them all, then? I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. Here you go. No, no, that, that, that's OK. Yeah, you can have it. Really? Yeah, sure. Matches your mask. Thank you. Wow. Cheers, mate. What's your name? It's Donny. Donny. Nice to meet you. You're a real cool guy. That's really kind. Thank you. Cheers for that. No worries. Have a nice day. You too. Don't put it in direct sunlight.
time goes so quickly. The seasons are rolling into one. I always love the summers here. I like how the sun warms the water. It's beautiful and I'm creating more, but that's partly because the shore is covered in rubbish again. Rubbish. Really obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot more of it lately. Yeah, I suppose that was one of the good things to come from it all. I mean, that and the birds. Yeah, there was this super rain mocking bird in his mum garden. Like, how sick is that? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's got me into birds. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a sucker for him, to be honest. A bit of a geek, really, when you think yeah. about it. I mean, it was only the third in the UK ever to be seen. You normally find them in North America, but probably never going to see another one now, so. Pretty awesome. Right. He's been asking why there's so much rubbish now. Well, the world is... It's getting back to normal, and... Well, this... This is normal, unfortunately. Is all rubbish and upon the beach? Not all of it, exactly. Um, only actually a small amount of it ends up on the beach. The, the vast majority, it, it goes back into the ocean's ecosystem. It's sort of like the ocean's life bubble. How does that make you feel? It makes me angry. That's good. Use that. You know, I thought I'd know when it was time to move on. I knew it would be clear, and it is. It's been a happy home, and I'll leave it in safe hands. I'll say goodbye to my trashy friends. Hope other people will love them as much as I do. I hope they bring joy. And remind people that even when life hands you a load of rubbish, can make something beautiful.
eu ouvi uma história sobre a Cidade do Vento. Quem me contou foi um viajante, o Bill. Minha tia não gostava que eu desse trela pra ele. Então eu demorava lavando os copos pra ficar próxima do balcão. Ele só comentou por cima, mas me grudou na cabeça a ideia de uma cidade do vento. Umas duas vezes ensaiei e pedi pro Bill contar melhor aquela história. Mas minha tia tava sempre perto. Até que um dia o Bill não apareceu. Acho que eu nunca tinha pensado sobre a minha própria cidade. Mas naquele tempo comecei a ver como me aborreciam aquelas calçadas impregnadas de poeira. O ar parado. Só era bom quando não tinha ninguém na pracinha e eu ficava no balanço. Subindo cada vez mais alto. Ou quando pedalava, mas as distâncias ficavam cada vez menores. Chegando no trabalho, desempilhar aquelas cadeiras de plástico, desbotadas. Aqueles copos e aqueles homens todos iguais. E eu pensava na cidade do vento que devia ser como um imenso balanço preso no céu. Num dia, no caminho para o trabalho, soprou uma brisa fresca. Resolvi pedalar até não aguentar mais. Quando me dei conta, já tinha deixado para trás o bar. E do asfalto vi com um estranho alívio como era mesmo pequena a minha cidade. Passou um caminhão buzinando, mas não dava para ver dentro da boleia. Sei lá porque imaginei que encontraria o Bill na estrada. Seja como for, segui o vento e cheguei aqui. O senhor sabe se essa é a cidade do vento? Aqui é um entreposto. A cidade é um navio sem mar. Cercada de vento por todos os lados. Insiste em... Ficar no lugar. O senhor me desculpe. Poderia me indicar o caminho? Preciso chegar na cidade do vento e só cheguei nessa praia vazia. O Oriente e o Sul há muito foram descritos. Mas olhar... Você quer, menina? Uma vez me disseram que basta aprender a olhar para ser feliz. Mas ao sul do sul do mundo, será possível olhar e se manter feliz? Você veio até aqui. Então, siga. O caminho é esse. Bateu um vento forte, encharcado de mar. Eu procurei a terra com os pés. Meus cabelos se emaranhavam. Agarrei Cissa. Quando abri os olhos, o entreposto tinha sumido. Os portões da cidade me encaravam. Antes de entrar, dei uma olhada para trás. Mal consegui ver. O vento me conduziu. Me apresentava a sua cidade. Eu nem pedalava. Me deixava levar por aquelas ruas que pareciam um caminho que sempre teve ali.
e me perguntava Quão fundo está fincado o alicerce dessas casas? Do que são feitos os tijolos e o cimento para que não sejam lançadas aos ares? Quem não tem portas e janelas para fechar? Será que se dobra como as árvores? Será que as mulheres enchem suas bolsas com pedras para sair às ruas? Será que o vento empurra os peixes até as redes dos pescadores ou dispersa os cardumes? E como as pessoas se escutam no meio da ventania? Será que pedem ao padre que tire de suas cabeças o murmúrio do vento? Será pecado lhe dar ouvidos? No emaranhado de palavras se misturam frases sem sentido. Valeu uma dor de cabeça. Eu sou em Laguna, mas agora... Mas tinha a banda antigamente, né? O homem só fabricava as coisas de fundo qualidade, e hoje é quantidade. Todo silêncio reconduz ao tema do desenvolvimento. O que fazer para a cidade crescer? Tomam de exemplo lugares onde o neon brilha à beira-mar. Aqui, a doçura das fachadas testemunha o sonho perdido. Espera-se ainda que a escravidão e a guerra possam prosperar. Se o vento virasse, as casuarinas se convertessem em mastros, se soltassem as velas e como um barco que carrega o mar dentro, essa cidade pequena se desprendesse do braço de terra que a ancora e se lançasse ao vento. 
seus cães uivando a lua, sem terra à vista. Voltar ao mar A navegar Sair da guarita Parar de olhar E não ter mais terra à vista Mas o que você queria era olhar a cidade do vento, não é, menina? Por que eu pensava tanto na cidade do vento como um belo céu? O vento também corre rasteiro. Exausta e mareada, me deitei. As costas no chão e a barriga para o céu. Encarava aquela limpidez. Alguns pássaros voavam sobre mim numa tranquilidade impossível. E eu ali, imóvel, presa à imagem daquele céu. Pensava no céu da minha cidade, onde já era hora de subir a porta do bar. O vento me jogava areia no rosto. E eu pensava que a poeira devia estar se acumulando à minha espera para ser varrida. E pensava no trabalho do vento para fazer aquela praia. No tempo que levou para fazer das pedras... Aquele monte de areia. Como dos copos se fazem os cacos. E da areia o caminhar das dunas. Que os pés bêbados arrastam. E pensava em tudo que o vento era capaz de arrastar de encobrir e de desenterrar. O que é morto se enterra. A voz daquele pássaro parecia falar dentro da minha cabeça. As praias desertas continuam esperando por nós dois. A este encontro eu não devo faltar. Acordei e já era manhã. Um vento seco me olhava da lagoa. Me gelava até os ossos. Montei na cis e pedalei o mais rápido que pude. O frio me atravessava. 
senti um aperto no peito. Me virei uma última vez. Já não via cidade alguma. Vai, meu filho, vai. Que Deus lhe dê boa sorte, fortuna e felicidade. Não tem segredo, vai, que esta província muito tem a ver com a cidade. Um pouco mais alargada, talvez, mas não tenha medo, não. Um pouco mais alargada, talvez, mas não tenha medo, não. Só não se esqueça que esse céu de anil é muito grande pra voar. E mesmo assim, avião de papel não é fácil de se pilotar. Só não se esqueça de voltar pra ver o que restou desse lugar. Que o sol e a chuva e os homens práticos vão modificar. Que o sol e a chuva e os homens práticos vão modificar. Ah, ah, ah. ah, ah, ah. Thank you.